All right, folks. Well, we're so happy to be here, and tonight we have a special treat for you. Performing comedy for the first time on our show, please welcome Boston legend, Lenny Clark. <laughs> Thanks, man. How are you? Good. Steve Candles. Hi, Jim. How are you, Jimmy? What a band! What a band! Yeah! Fantastic! What a band! Wow! This is so exciting. A little Greek boy at Arlington Mass has a dream, and he turns it into an extravaganza. Out to hundreds of foreign countries, of which everybody is already here. <laughs> oh, I say that kidding around, but it's true. You know, I tell you what, you know, recently we had a tragedy, and we all came together as a great group, you know? And we had catchphrases like, Boston Strong. And it was wonderful, everyone loved it, Boston Strong. And then Devil Patrick, our fabulous governor, came out with his own catchphrase, shelter in place, shelter in place, shelter in place. And we all said, what the hell is he saying? He said, governor, what are you saying? He said, I'm saying shelter in place, it's a great new catchphrase. What does it mean? It means, well, basically stay where you are. Well, why don't you say that? This guy, I can't figure him out for the life of me. Eight weeks ago, we had a big storm. And he came on TV and said, everybody, get off the roads. There's going to be a snowstorm. Get off the roads by 4 o'clock. Do not go to Stop and Shop. Do not go to Market Basket, which is the Spanish Stop and Shop. <laughs> go right home. If you stay on the road, you're going to be fined $2,000 and a year in jail. What does he think? We're children? We're New Englanders. That's what we do when there's a storm. We get all whacked out and drive around and look at stuff. And if we get pulled over by the police and they say, have you been drinking? No, the roads are a mess. <laughs> Clean them up. So at 4 o'clock, I said, get off the road. At 4.01, I fired up the truck and I was out driving around. And you know who was out there with me? Every illegal alien in Massachusetts. <laughs> they don't care, they don't understand. And I'm out there driving, I was looking for the cops. I wanted them to lock me up. I would have given them a hard time. I said, go ahead, lock me up. Throw me in jail, put me in with rapists, murderers, thieves, thugs. And they say, Lenny, what are you in for? Snow ban. <laughs> That's right, I'm a rebel. <laughs> but shelter in place, that drove me crazy. For those of you who don't know what that is, well, when we had the terrorists out shooting and bombing, the, they said that we had to stay in our homes in Cambridge, and Boston, and Watertown, and some of them, I mean, they said, stay in place. It was like martial law. I mean, we're grown-ups. You can't make us stay in the house. And we were forced to stay in our house for 14 hours with our wife and kids. <laughs> and I thought they were against torture. Let me tell you. Locked up in the house with your wife and kids for 14 hours, another 20 minutes, we would have started killing each other. <laughs> and the FBI, in their infinite wisdom, well, Russia called and said, you're gonna watch out for these guys, they're bad. No, don't worry about it. We'll get to them when we're through listening to everyone else's calls. Look, I, what do you mean, oh, that's what happened, we were warned. And they said to us, stay in the house. We'll take care of everything. I said, so, what do you mean? You want us to stay home and you'll find these terrorists? Yeah, how'd that work out for you? Then, <laughs> after 16 hours, uh, Ed Davis, the commissioner of Boston, who I like, came out and said, don't worry about it. Go ahead out, they're gone. No problems here. <laughs> Two minutes later, we found them. <laughs> and it was incredible, because the big hero of the whole event was the guy from Watertown with the boat. He was amazing. All this guy wanted to do was to have a cigarette. <laughs> He's walking around the house going, his wife of mine won't let me smoke in the house. The cops won't let me smoke outside. I'm gonna kill somebody if I don't have a smoke. <laughs> they said, you can go outside. He said, thank God. So he went outside, he lit up a smoke. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what daddy needs. Oh yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. Is that blood on my boat? I don't remember this whole, oh, come on, get out of my boat. 
You're bleeding all over. It's a new bone. He's poking him with a stick. Get out. I can't even finish my cigarette in peace. Hello, 911? Yeah. You know that guy you're looking for? Yeah, he's in my backyard. Yeah, 97 Franklin Street. Yeah, about half a block away from where you stopped looking for him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's in my boat, yeah. What's that? You're coming up? Uh, hey, you won't screw up my boat, will you? All right, I'll meet you up back. Two minutes later, every cop in North America was there. Arlington Police, Somerville people, Hudson, New Hampshire Police, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the militia from the Patriots were there with muskets and shotguns, fish and game, wildlife, MBTA police. They all showed up. They looked at the boat. They looked at each other. Blam, 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 blam. 600 rounds. They hit them twice. And they want to take away our guns? Thank you. Police have a tough job. I'm not down to the car. I took the test to be a cop because I flung the post office and fire exam. I figured, what the hell, I'm here. I got a 98, and they said, no, you can't be a cop. I said, why not? And they said, you don't speak Spanish. I said, por favor, mucho, please. Oh, I really need the job. Oh. They don't laugh a lot either, but I'm glad now because I don't have the honesty, the integrity it takes to be a good cop. You sent me on one of these drug stakeouts, I kick on the door, there it is. Five pounds of cocaine, pure uncut. Six pounds of grass, $300,000 in cash. Nude women dancing around with automatic weapons. <laughs> I'm going to court the next day, say, Ron, I found a six pack and a couple of joints. That's all that was there. <laughs> you know, the one good thing about the marathon, aside from how it drew us together as a community, and aside from how the first responders worked so quickly and saved so many lives, the fact that it's overlooked is, a Kenyan did not win the Boston Marathon this year. That's right, it was an Ethiopian. Go figure. And I was furious, Jim, and I'll tell you why. This Ethiopian had the nerve to come out and say, I'm not coming back to Boston to defend my title because you people are too violent. Violent? We're the victims. People like you blew us up. For God's sakes, we did nothing wrong. Well, you know, never mind, don't come back. Go to Ethiopia, try to find yourself a good meal. We were only cheering for you because you beat the Kenyans. And the Kenyans, the Kenyans were never here. Who won last year? A Kenyan. Year before that, a Kenyan. Year before that, a Kenyan. Every year they win. And I looked up some research, I went on the interweb, and I found out that the Kenyans train by running in the desert in 130 degree heat. Yeah, being chased by lions and tigers and cheetahs and, and, and wild dogs of the Kalahari and dingoes that will eat their babies if they stop. So they never stop and they never lose. 130 degrees. Do you remember two years ago when the Boston media came out and said, white people, do not run. It's gonna be 96. Much too hot for you fair-skinned people. Especially you, Sully, with those freckles, you'll burst into flames. The Kenyans are outside having a smoke. 96. <laughs> Wimps, we run at 130. Just once, I'd love to see a nor'easter come in on the day of the marathon. 130 mile per hour winds. Hail the size of canned hands. Winds, slush, sleet, blowing those 50 pound Kenyan guys around like the Wizard of Oz. Have some fat guy from Somerville and a thong and a cigar and a six pack. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I love you, Steve Katzo. Shara, congratulations. The entire Katzo's family, the band. You people are amazing. Good night, everybody. Love it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such an honor to have him here, and I, I do want to mention that tonight he's helping us raise money for the Jimmy Fund. And you told me a year ago when I asked you when you came on the show that you would be here if you could be here, and you did come. Ladies and gentlemen, Lenny Clark. They love you. They love you. Yeah. 
I wish, I wish some of them would love me just once. They all love you. Yeah. <laughs> all the good work you do for yeah, the Jimmy work. Fund. Uh, you, you work tirelessly. You're always helping other people. Well, I got 150 people helping me, so it's not just me. But oh, thank I you. know. You've got a great staff. And you know, for those people that were with Kristen Gorman, she's now working. So she came with you and said, what happened? Oh, she's not been kidnapped. She's doing interviews backstage. <laughs> and we're all working to try and raise money for the Jimmy Fund tonight. And thank you all for your generosity just by being here. And thank you for everything you do and supporting this guy because he's the greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back right after this. Thank you.